everybody and welcome to Relative Pitch. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon and we are ready for a round of golf here at Augusta National. Mm-mm. Enjoy the azaleas and the magnolias. Thank you. Okay, so for all that kind of eight. For all of you who hated that, please uh, vote to kick Michael off. We'll be looking for a new co-host um, very soon. Um, well, I guess happy <laughs> Anthony's not coming back. That's so happy funny. Masters weekend. Woo! Right, happy Masters weekend to all those who celebrate. Being from Augusta, our spring break was always Masters week, so that we could get out and leave because it got a little cray that a week little. in town. So I, I will always think of spring break with golf. Unfortunately, you know. I will say, if you're not rooting for Colin Mount Morikawa, you're false, and you should stop following the podcast. Don't know who that is, but congrats to oh, you, girl. Okay, uh, great, because I was literally <laughs> like, who in the hell is that? I don't know not one thing about golf. Um, I truly don't care. It's very boring. Um, next topic, please. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that intro was nice. I did good. It was something. It was something. Um, but, wow, oh, my gosh. Hi, everyone. What a what a interesting time the past week has been. Um, let's ju- let's just jump into it. There's been an article that has come out um, that is from Vulture uh, that was shared by um, Ka- the amazing Catherine Needleman, who I believe is principal oboe of Baltimore, but also stretches beyond that um, with her advocacy and all the other work that she does in um, fighting for social equity, gender equity, pay equity, all these things that she uses her platforms to speak up about uh, what's happening in our field that needs to be addressed. And um, I always love when I, well, it's like, it's like a, it's like a situation where when I see her post, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good take, but I know it's going to be about something that is unfortunate. Right. And so there's this post that Catherine shared from Vulture, uh, headlined, A Hidden Sexual Assault Scandal at the New York Philharmonic. Now, what's very interesting about this post is that while the actual um, article from Vulture came out on the 12th, which was Friday, like last Friday, this, is an, uh, this was something that actually occurred back in 2010. Um, and it is being brought back up again because of various things. So uh, we, over the past years in general, we have been seeing an uptick of like, I guess, exposures to sexual assault cases that have happened within the orchestral opera and all the other, the field, just the arts field in general and just in general, but I guess relevant to the industry we're in we're seeing more people being actually accused or called out for it, or it's known whether, you know, it's known that this is a situation that happened. The issue is that even though a lot of it's known, right? People know, oh, don't don't go take lessons with this person or don't go study with this person or don't go do this with this person because X, Y, and Z, those people still have their positions at whatever institutions and organizations that they serve even though it is known that there are allegations against them and have been past convictions or, you know, and things, it gets very messy. This is a very messy situation for many, 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 many many reasons. We have talked about the idea of tenure and how tenure is a double-edged sword. In general, it was made whenever, because you think of tenure in the institutions, so like school, and I think, I didn't even know what tenure was until we got to like KSU probably in undergrad, and we we're like, oh, what does a tenured professor mean, and da 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 and if you think about it, back in the day, I'm sure it was nice to be tenured, um, or the idea of being tenured, it's like, okay, they can't just randomly fire me, I have this position, I know I'm going to have this pay, and this, you know, whatever, I understood, when it comes to unions and like what we have now within symphony orchestras and other organizations, same deal. If you reach tenure, um, which I think we have someone in the podcast who can maybe talk about a current experience that, that maybe uh, aligns with this. <clears throat> oh, you want me to talk about it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So um, if you don't know, now you know, I was granted tenure for the Chattanooga Symphony and Opera. Um, following our Beethoven 9 concert last week. Congratulations. Um, 
pizza. Thank you. Thank you. I was stressed all year about it. Um, if you knew me, you knew I was stressed about it. Um, but okay. So the, the way it works, um, is you get hired by an orchestra and this is just a regional one, but it's pretty much the same through all the way up to Exxon. So Ropa and Exxon operate pretty similarly. If they have a CBA, which is a collective bargaining agreement, very fancy words. So sorry, but due to the collective bargaining agreement, you get hired. Let's say I got hired in May. So the season doesn't start till September. I start my season in September and we go through the first season. They could offer you tenure. They could offer you comments um, and they won't just fire you. You get a certain period of time. I think it's one to two years with my orchestra mm. and they evaluate your performance. They evaluate um, your personability with other members of the orchestra. They talk to the principals of the brass. So mainly the biggest consideration is the con is the non conference the music director and the principal trumpet. Hmm. But they'll ask the horn and they'll ask the trombone and ask the tuba just in case like some things were a little off or something. But so I was granted tenure because of my performance and the way I treated this year and was very professional. Um, and so what that means now is for the foreseeable future, the job is mine. Unless I do some crazy stuff. And it's outlined in the CBA, which you can do to get fired with and without tenure. Mm. So at least our orchestra outlines it. I think every orchestra outlines it, but if they do it is another thing. Mm. Um, so I will be the second trumpet uh, for the Chattanooga Symphony Opera until I leave or we fold, which I don't think it is happening soon. So what that means is I get guaranteed services every year. I get first, like if we are guaranteed 80, I have 80. And then I have to make at least 33% of them a year to can remain tenured. Mm. So all that to say, I had to play a lot of stuff this year. Mm. And when I got that news, I was like, oh, okay, now I want to cook that milkshake. Mm. So, right. cook that milkshake. so By the way, oh, I was going to say shout out to T-Rabbits and Delonica. For giving me my caffeine tea this morning, so I'm awake. If you don't see my eyelids, baby, drooping. Mm. So we, so yeah. So let's celebrate that. Like we have a lot of amazing artists who are getting tenure, professors who are getting tenure, who they can say, "Oh my gosh, this is so wonderful for me, my family. We know that we're gonna be provided for until I choose to leave to my next thing." So let's not, you know, dis discount the significance of what tenure actually offers. And with that. We know that there are people who will abuse things that are supposed to be for the greater good, right? And for the good of people. And so the issue is that when people are granted tenure, who will try to push the boundaries of what they can do without getting fired. Um, this is when these situations like this happen where there was a member in 2010, the New York Phil was on tour and a newer member of their horn section um, and we'll link this article down below um, for you all to to read as well so that you're you can actually look at the names and everyone involved and all the dates and everything because it's a thick article right we can't I think she was only the second woman in the brass section as well right this is our also because it was 2010 very a very historical win um, for the orchestra um, after very a very long period of time without any really women within that section within those sections so very new member of the ensemble um and they're on tour and this is she's so she's you know with the orchestra but she hasn't been granted tenure yet right michael just talked about this process so you're really wanting to be you know very liked very you know you want people to really engage with you in a great way you want to be on your best playing all these things so anyway you're on tour what do we do on tour oh everyone wants to go out you want to mingle all these things so rightfully so um, there's an evening where there's like, you know, a gathering of musicians, two musicians who were known by many members of the ensemble and other community members um, for being, ha being having done activities that were not, you know, moral period, 
but it was all like this everyone knew but no one was saying it right everyone knew but there was no like actual evidence everyone knew everyone knew but no one did anything about it this kind of situation right and this is very known also in the in the field of in education within the you know the school system and institutions we've gone to schools everyone has gone to i would say most schools where it's like a known thing one or multiple professors have done something but they're still sitting there in their office they still have office hours where they can close the door with the student inside the room right like let's talk about it. let's it's weird because it's true this is what this is the system the structures that we exist within so basically the article um speaks to this incident where uh, the newer member of the organization, she was invited back to like, uh, you know, the home of one of these two characters who, again, are known to like not necessarily be of the highest character. And it ends up being where uh, she loses consciousness after being handed something to drink. And she wakes up um, and has been taken advantage of sexually by one of these members of the orchestra, a tenured member of the orchestra. Um, and there is evidence that this, like there was DNA, like this person, this member of the orchestra's DNA was inside of her, right? So we, you, do you understand what, you know what I mean? What's going on here? And she doesn't have any remembrance of what happened that evening her it's like she blacked out which is usually associated with being roofied or some type of date rape drug and so this is she's married right during this time period as well i believe her husband's on tour with them her phone dies that night when she's out with these two other members of the orchestra and she when she wakes up and she's disoriented doesn't remember anything um she's taken home where she finds that she finds that i i it's hard to even talk about it and like say it out loud but it's obvious that something happened where it would have been discomforting for her it's meaning that she was not conscious during this time or that would not have happened um this is a, this be, stirs up a lot of things that begin happening. There are questions she you know she goes back to you know to ask the the person whose bed she wakes up in the next morning who has from this stand, her standpoint has taken advantage of her because she has no remembrance and so now then after talking to her husband and another member of the organization who is another woman within the organization who's on tenure reviewer is in the her tenure process they encourage her to go to the police about this and so i believe there's a phone call which is i, I think it's a controlled call Control call yeah control call where she calls um the the member of the orchestra who she believes sexually assaulted her and asks him like what happened and he can't keep his story straight he's like oh i felt fine well actually i was a little drunk Oh, and then, oh, actually, I don't remember this. I was a little boy, like all these things that are just obvious that he can't keep his story straight. Um, she's tested again, DNA of his DNA is found within her. He does admit over the phone that they had consensual sex. Um, but again, the fact that she does not have any remembrance of this and the fact that she was handed a drink by the, another member of the organization who's named in this article as being a part of this assault and when they they take a uh, think a um, some evidence from her hair to test it for a certain date rape drug and they find evidence of that within her hair now there are systems and pro like we've been talking about with unions and different what's in your contract and also like what is considered what whenever you do investigations there are different standards of like conviction, right? There's like something where it could be evident, but because we're holding it to a certain standard of it has to be clear, evident, period, whatever, whatever, you can have different levels of conviction, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, well, may, this person says it was evident, but this person to this standard says there's not enough proof to actually cause for terminate. So this is what was happening within this. There's all this evidence being gathered. There's not enough to convict them um eventually something does happen where they the two members there's investigations that happen enough where 
they do get terminated. They get released from the orchestra, right? Now, mind you, though, that before this, her, her tenure process, because of the ongoing investigation, gets corrupted because of this happening, because they, the, there are members of the orchestra who saw it as an attack on their tenured member was trying to say a tenured member did this to them. And not only was it something that affected her own tenure process, but also the other um, female member who was supporting her and to, trying to make sure that she was safe, who was also going through her own tenure process, also was affected where both of them lost their positions and did not get tenure during this process. Yes, and just a side note to add to Lauren's yeah. thing, for the, for the trombone player, who was like on the side of Kisner, who was the horn player. Yes. Um, she was told by the music, by a personal manager, by the music director, that loved her playing, so happy they were there in September. As of Thanksgiving, her committee met and was like, we don't want her here. Because she was outwardly supporting Kisner and doing things. And then by February, she was denied tenure. So the it the committee has a lot of power, and yeah. if you don't please the committee, it's crazy. Right, and again, please go read this article because yes. it took me a long time to read through and understand what like where boom 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 this happened and then this happened then and this happened then. I'm kind of giving you a like a brief snip of what it, like the occurrence and the general just knowing that there were again multiple allegations that were coming out. They were accused. The two members of the two tenured member of, members of the organization at some point were accused that they did something enough to be terminated as tenured members, but they were then brought back later on and are still sitting in the orchestra now. That is a big thing to think about. I remember that. Like I remember when that happened, when they were dismissed from the New York Phil. Exactly. And it was the talk of the town because one of them plays a certain instrument. Um, so yeah, I remember when this happened. And then when they were brought back, I remember that whole thing. Right. This is infuriating, honestly, <laughs> hearing this story. Um, I wanna go back to a certain point that was made about the different levels mm. of investigation yes um because you know unfortunately in the society that we live in we're always like if something happens to you report but so many people don't because they know it's not going to come to a conclusion that is worthy of the damage that they have done to others right and that to me it like breaks my heart because you have so many people that have been done wrong, but they know that there's no justice that will come out of this. I think it's, it's disgusting. As, as, this, as this story is saying, how you can find somebody like enough to terminate them, but then, oh, since the dust ha has settled, we can bring them back. And then my... Um, if I remember correctly, I think I remember this them coming back a couple years ago, and I remember the first question I had was, "Is this really what our profession is? It's more about how you can play than that you have done something unthinkable to another human being." Mm. Sorry, I don't give a damn how good you play. You could be playing Gabriel's oboe, sound the trumpet, and everything else from the Bible. I don't care because what you have done, you have ruined somebody's life. And yes. the amount of gaslighting that has happened, not only from you, but from this organization, I want to see it all go down. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's basically what the conversation that's being started is about this fact the fact that this woman who was rightfully given won this position a very historic appointment and went through this situation only to be fought, like di like dismissed during her tenure process and these two 
assaulters who also have other allegations that have been that came up about them during this time as well yes. um, are still sitting in that orchestra right now and people didn't warn this, this is the thing if you know of an allegation and there is okay let me put this in a different context that people maybe would like that is the context people would understand but let's also put it in a different one we live in the south mm. like me and anthony live in the south and lawrence from the south there are certain areas where if i'm taking lauren or anthony out to lunch or dinner i'm very as me very particular about where i take them and they're also very particular about where they want to go so let's put that there like we all understand this fact like i remember i was going out with one of my friends and he was like oh let's go to this bar i said i want you to look at that location again like i want to go too but for you and for me and for us let's look at that location again and that's like so that's the same thing let's put this now in the situation we are in if you are a tenured member of the orchestra mm. you know there's been allegations mm. you need to alert your female colleagues or at least be like if you don't want to say the whole thing because it was just an allegation and no conviction be like hey if i was you i would just keep to myself be buddy buddy and just practice my music and if you if you want to get even more a thing, you go. There's ways you could say it without saying it if you want to not get in trouble. But you're tenured, so you'll be fine. Like I do that all the time, especially if you're from a minority status. Yes. We we know who don't f with us. Yes. And we know who who is going to cause us harm. So like. If I were to see another black person come into this orchestra and, and I know that somebody has had some racist remarks in the past and they happen to be in the same section, I'm going to pull that person aside and just, I just want to let you know, like, this is what has maybe happened in the past. This is what alleged, you know, mm -hmm. I just don't want you to go through that, blah, blah, blah. But that's fine. However, mm. to me, even though that is socially acceptable, I don't think that's enough. Mm. I would like to see that person gone. Gone. I'm so, and, and look, you can call me right now because I know some people are going to to take this uh, this angle at me of like you're an extremist. You damn right, because I'm an extremist because I know what it is like. Mm. If it is alleged, that means something happened. Whether the what you what was alleged is true. Something of that line, you had to do something. You maybe, if, if it was a racist remark, maybe you didn't say the N-word, but you said something demeaning about Black people. So therefore, just because you didn't go to level 10 doesn't mean the rest of these levels you didn't hit. Right. And also, it's different if it's like a rate, like a person we all know who like has never had a track record of anything who randomly gets accused of something. It, it's okay if you're like, whoa, I've never heard of this person ever. But in this case, this was not this case. There were multiple allegations and other things that had been said before that started coming up and growing as this case opened up. So what it actually showed is that <laughs> there were multiple situate and there were even testimonies when they were going through these and eyewitness or witness accounts and character uh, witnesses who spoke on it who said who spoke to these two men in the or tenure track members of the orchestra and they mentioned these things they said yeah we heard we heard about this this happened we heard about this i noticed something about this so it was not a situation where it was just a random allegation right that's what the this is what also pisses me off about this whole situation. When there is DNA evidence, test multiple, 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 multiple DNA evidence. Like, you know, people always be like, you can't argue with science. You can't argue with science. Okay, well, here is science proving that this happened. Mm -hmm. And you still want to sit here and be like, Oh, we don't know if that happened. What? It's inconclusive. It's inconclusive. Like what? Oh. And then on top of that, 
you have these testimonials from other people that have been done wrong and you are just putting those to the side, you're putting this evidence aside for two people or for, for one man. Like I, I, I and because we've talked about this on the podcast before, like we've talked about um, the R&B artist R. Kelly. We've talked about like we've talked about these situations. Um, we've talked about the conductor of whatever that orchestral group from yeah. the 1980s or whatever, um, all of his allegations. Like, I just don't understand how you can have a hundred plus people telling you that this person has done something wrong to me. And these are separate people that are saying the exact same thing. And you as an organization are still willing to be like, I don't know. There's nothing conclusive about this. This is just hearsay. Girl. But then it would be the same organization that will turn around and be like, we support this. We support women. We support um, uh, uh, a BIPOC. We support, um, especially when it's like the months, you know, um, all these oh God, uh, months. The aware, awareness month, STD awareness, HIV awareness, like they are the supporters of all of this, but you are allowing these unspeakable acts going on in your own organization. But my, here's the, but I think my final question is who in these organization is going to be the maverick to stand up for these victims? Because one, as we all know, these orchestras and all these other organizations, they're a tiered system. Right. Board members, they have all of this. Who is going to be the maverick that stands up and say, no, something is wrong and I have the power to do something about it? Mm. And, and will that happen? About it. Do it. Do it. What would, what would happen? And that's exactly what there have been comments all this week that said, what would happen if the entire New York Philharmonic, probably minus these two characters and their gross friends, um, who said, we're actually going on strike and we're not doing this until this is brought to justice. Can you imagine the power the of the combined power. voice? I want to up one up you and you said it, but I'm going to steal it on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> what if, what if Dudamel said, I'm not coming unless they're fired. Right. You gonna say no to Dudamel? So for people who may not know, Gustavo Dudamel, amazing, like basically rock star conduct orchestral conductor, um, who's currently with the LA Phil, is leaving, I believe is it 2026 or I can't remember, but in a few years. Let's take over in 2026. Yeah, to transition to be the music director for the New York Philharmonic. There were conversations online and I, me and Michael talked about it the other day. I was like, do you know what signal it would send if a figure like Gustavo Dudamel would say, I am not coming to do my appointment unless these two are actually brought to justice and are terminated from the orchestra. And there's no, they're not coming back. Can you imagine the signal it would, and that's what I need people to understand about your platform. Tenure this, money that, all that, great. Do what you want with it. When you have power to actually affect change, use it. Yeah. What do you like? Actually, can you imagine how many people you could help if you opened your mouth and actually said so? Yes, it's risky. Anything we say anywhere, as anyone, some the wrong person could take it the wrong way. We know that, right? But also, what if it actually does more than that? What if it does more? And it would. That's the whole thing. So I. I'm not, and we're not going to say that we know it's easy to stick up and be the first person. It's scary to be the person who goes, actually, I think this is wrong. Because you could risk losing your job. You could risk doing this and doing this. We know. We know. But the tenured members of the New York Philharmonic, what are they going to do to you? You're at the same. My checks, you're not breaking any of the rules that Michael just outlined early in the podcast. You're not breaking anything by standing up because you were, but also like for me, I would think like, wow, I could be the, the like complete change of somebody else. Like they're going through all of this and nobody's speaking up for them. I'm going to be that ally. 
it just take one person because one then becomes two, two becomes three. And then now you got a whole village and a whole population of people mm. that are all speaking together as one. And especially when many people of, of that population have power. Mm. So I advise all, all anybody that have power, if something is wrong, say something, say it. And it's not enough also, sorry, because I know Michael, you have something, but I think Catherine also posted that, uh, or reposted the Musicians of New York Philharmonic's post that they posted a few days ago, I think after the article came out. And it said, in light of recent events, we, the Orchestra Committee of New York Philharmonic, believe it is imperative that you hear our voices. We wholeheartedly denounce and find abhorrent all conduct that violates and degrades the women in our orchestra. Such conduct is an affront to women everywhere. It must never be tolerated. We call on our fellow musicians and the Philharmonic Symphony Society to provide a safe environment so that no one is afraid to come to work. That does nothing. It does nothing because they're still sitting there with you. It's not enough. A post is not enough. You saying we like women, it's not enough. Actually use your platform, use your, be actionable about it. Actually, I'm sick of words. Do something. Stand up. Just do it. Walk and, out. And like, uh, as we wrap up and following Lauren's little call to action, mm. I want to go back to Doc Jones, Courtney Jones' episode. You were lucky enough to wake up this morning. Mm. We were lucky enough to make it through COVID. Mm. So that means we have a duty, a call to action to change this world to what we want to live in, to stop letting fear drive us to stop letting awful people that we all like to complain about drive us. We need to be who we are. We need to accept everyone, except for if you do some wrong shit, you ain't getting accepted, I'm sorry. But what you woke up this morning, if you woke up this morning, you have the right to make a change. If you woke up this morning, you have the power to make a change. And if you woke up this morning, you have everything in you to choose to be a good person and not to be an asshole. Treat your colleagues better, treat your friends better, and treat strangers better. Hmm. And with that, I just, y'all, and this goes to anything. It can go to, if you're at a school right now where you know things are happening, you're a group or organization in town, speak up for it. And also for those of you who know you fall into this category of wrongdoers and who have been allowed back in and who like, oh, well, I'm still here. So I guess it, you know what you did. It may not be convicted yet. We may not know about it, but you know what you did. Amen. And you'll never forget it. You will never forget it. And it'll never leave you. You can't, no, no amount of scrubbing this, whatever, is going to get it off of you. And it will come to light. Be scared. Be afraid. And with that, Relative Pitch will continue to use our platform to talk about these things. Because it's important. Amen. Always. Amen. Whew. Anyway. Sending softness, love, peace, joy, happiness to everyone this week. There's a lot going on. Just take a moment to yourself if you need it. Uh, and we will see you next week. See you next week.